Now, with insurance prices these days going through the roof, especially for 4 by 4s such as Range Rovers, etc., and some of them coming up even not even to be insured. I know a few people that drive a few more closer to a modern car, and they're having trouble on their insurance as well. And as we all know, some of the classic cars are absolutely sky-high prices these days when people are looking for them. But in the last few weeks, I've been looking around for something just drive around through the winter it goes through the horrible weather and uh, in the snow if that ever if that comes back again when this popped up the car we're in today now this popped up on marketplace it had been on sale for about a month and i couldn't resist the possibility of going down and have a look at it so i got a mate that gives a lift down there spoke to the guy that owns it uh, had a drive out in it absolutely love it uh, as you can see it drives like a dream it's uh, it's absolutely marvelous love driving the car pre-2000 so i can use it for the early shows in the summer if i want to so it, it's easy to work on it's easy to drive the only downside for me personally is it's front wheel drive I'm not all that keen on front wheel drive but as you'll see in the rest of the video for the way the car is the way the car looks the way the car drives it's absolutely spot on you couldn't fault it the question is then is it possible to buy a 90s classic for less than a grand it is because i've got one and it's absolutely gorgeous it's in fantastic condition let me spin the camera around and show you what it is that i managed to get for less than a thousand pounds this is a 1995 ford mondeo two liter gear now obviously it has one or two issues you wouldn't expect to buy any car for less than a thousand pounds without having issues it drives absolutely perfectly it's mot all the way through until june of 2024 and there's very little wrong with it at all as you can see it's all lovely at the front end I've got the fog lights under the bumper there now there is sadly a dent in the door but you know what for less than a grand I'm not going to worry about the dent in the door and I'm not sure if it's where I've parked up or if it is actually the paint but that door might be a slightly different shade to the back door or the back door might be a different shade not too sure about that a couple of issues that it does have obviously we've got the back bumper held on by a self tapper there and we've got a little bit of rust coming out there but honestly believe me that is the only rust on the car most things work on it and when I say most things this uh, high level brake light at the back some of the bulbs are out on that one now I don't know you might be able to tell me in the comments do I have to replace the entire unit or can I just take it apart and buy individual bulbs and put the bulbs in them rear wash and wipe oh, now I've just spotted learning things all the time I've just spotted there's also a self tapper there but like I say for less than a grand not going to worry about that absolutely perfect lovely spoiler on the back as well 16 valve but of course the main thing is the worst thing about the entire car look at the wheels man look at them absolutely awful I mean, if i stand back far enough do they honestly suit the car do you think they suit the car we've got these low profile rubber band tires and these stupid ridiculous wheels I mean, they're all pitted and corroded. And as much as I hate them, I think I'll leave them on over the winter. They're that bad. Look at the amount of weights on them. Good God. And I think I'll leave the wheels on through the winter. Let's just let them get destroyed. I mean, they're absolutely horrendous. Right, so inside the car then, you've got your normal 90s or mid-90s Ford dash. That is in there. Oh, yes, yeah, the phone now on that one. Uh, it does have an aftermarket stereo. Now, we've got this lovely wood trim. Obviously, that's taken from those famous Nebraskan plastic trees that Ford always used for uh, for the wood trim. Uh, it's trimmed out on the door handles as well. However, it's not there. Now, I would have thought, is, is it just me? I was, I'm was i convinced that this bit here on uh, gears on Fords used to be wood trims as well. I have had a look online and the other gears that I found, they don't seem to have it either. They have the plastic on here. Can you get the wood for that? Can you get this kind of effect for that? Or are they always plastic? And strangely for a gear, every other gear I've ever owned has had leather seats. Strangely, these are like a velour. I mean, they're nice and warm. 
there's no heated seats. This door handle down here has uh, a bit of an issue in as much as uh, there's a bit of weight saving going on. So I don't know if that'll add any horsepower to the car or not. Other than that, it's really nice in here. And of course, the back seat, just as nice as well. Uh, the headline is also a, a dark headlining. There is an electric sunroof, but uh, I haven't been uh, trustworthy enough to actually hit that magical button yet. No, I'm just going to leave that for now, just in case. Now we've got a full range of gauges as normal. And you've got your temperature gauge over there on the far left, and your rev counter, your speedometer, and obviously your fuel gauge down in that corner. Now we've got a full collection of uh, your standard instrumentation and everything on the dashboard from Ford. You've got your ashtray down there, and your cigarette lighter. There is a second a cigarette lighter, it's up here. You're actually hiding in there, but I was using a, a sat nav the other day, so we didn't have that. We've got the pocket there, which I think by the looks of it is designed to hold tapes. And we've got the little divider in the middle. Uh, as I said, it has an aftermarket radio in it, stereo, uh, which is a tape player, which is like, what? I don't think I have any tapes anymore. And then you've got your temperature controls, you've got your direction for all your um, your air vents going on. Uh, this one has got your speed and which direction also comes with AC. So we've got AC in this one, and then the one for the remote mirror control, because it's got electric mirrors on both sides of the car. I've got a little coin holder in here that's got, I'm not quite sure what that is. Obviously the cover for something, we'll stick that back in there. Uh, we've got the air vent over there. A little bit of tea shelfery going on, nice and flat there. And of course the, the high edge means if we do spill any tea, it's going to sit there for ages and stay in the top lovely and get it all nice and sticky in one corner, but it's not going to fall on your, uh, on your legs or anything while you're driving. Uh, there's the glove box, which is quite big. You've got that in there. You've got your door pockets down here and then the normal gauges. And down here on this side, if I can get the, uh, the camera in, You've got your light switch. Now this one here is, is obviously the knob, for the want of a better word, is missing. I think this is the headlight leveler. So I think this is used to level the headlights out. If, if you know any different to that or if that's where it is, let me know in the comments. And then we've got on this one here, this is the dimmer switch for the dashboard, which doesn't appear to do an awful lot, but they do light up well at night. And then you've got your, uh, your rear demister control for the rear windscreen. And a blanking point there and over on this side at the top we've got the clock and we've got the heated windscreen from what I can see so far in the last couple of days it doesn't work but we're not going to worry about heated windscreen when you can got a I mean if, you, if you've got a bank card or a credit card just use that that's the easiest way of doing it and of course the automatic gearbox it's a proper automatic gearbox it's rebuildable it's not a DSG so don't have to worry about it packing in and dying at any given time and it also has the economy and the sports selection. I haven't tried it in sport yet, so uh, we may have to play around that at, with that at some point. We've got a lovely small armrest here, which again, space for tape storage. There's a little air freshener down there at the minute. Uh, driver seat isn't electric. None of the seats are, are electric as far as moving is concerned. But being a gear, the driver seat does have the switches down here to uh, lift and lower the seat electric windows all round and uh, it's actually really comfortable in here now i picked it up at the end of november so i've been using it for a few days now one problem it did have when i first got it was uh, on the last mot there was an advisory for uh, a worn bearing or a noisy wheel bearing on the front on the front passenger side so not wanting to mess about had both bearings done on the front so now they're both brand new and it, it drives a lot better now and of course with it being an old ford when you open the tailgate it is a hatchback when you open the tailgate the struts have gone so it does need a pair of struts also it does have a parcel shelf it's got the full parcel shelf which you could probably just make out in the background there behind me um but the is are, are the cords or are, are the strings you know the bits that attach the uh, the parcel shelf to the tailgate so when the tailgate goes up the parcel shelf goes up with it now the little plastic ends of that have uh, have gone so if i show you on the on the tailgate here we go now the ends of those they're both the same now, i believe they should hook up onto onto that on both sides so as you can see it's your normal Monday or loads of space. Absolutely filthy. 
so it needs a good clean it, it will get that but uh, it's just generally scruffy in all areas but we will clean that once if the weather stays like this no oh, comes with the tow bar as well yeah so i'm not really sure what you call those end pieces that should be on the strings or the cords for um, holding the parcel shelf up or holding the holding the parcel shelf onto the tailgate uh, in the minute obviously it makes not a lot of difference because it can just sit there when I open the tailgate uh, but it'd be a lot easier if I could find the end pieces um, if you know can you get them is there something else I can use or do I have to buy a whole parcel shelf because obviously I know how awkward and uh, like hen's teeth it can be to find some Ford parcel shelves it has been converted at the front it actually has a focus st170 brakes on it i don't know why do you need that good of brakes on a two liter mondeo it's not exactly a fire breathing monster is it it's, you know there's not 850 horsepower under that bonnet at the front there you'll, you'll be lucky if there's anywhere near 200 uh, let alone anything else under there at the minute so why on earth it's got focus st170 brakes on is there a reason for that is there a reason people do that comment below let me know there's a reason that people do the conversion to focus st170 brakes anyway if you've enjoyed the video do give it a like do consider subscribing to the channel have a look at all the other stuff i've got on there um, and comment below it really helps the channel it helps me so thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video bye for now